magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name forever. Glory be to God on high. Welcome one more time to the World Channel 345, my brothers and sisters, those of you on the World Wide Web. Our first time visitors, let me tell you, last week we had about three or four new viewers. And so I want to give God thanks for those individuals. I want to say to them, I pray that the Lord will continue to bless and that he will continue to visit our channel and to be a part of the World 345 family. My name is Reverend Lennox Hayden and I want to give God thanks for each and every one of you. Today we have a very powerful word. Hallelujah from the Lord. And I'm sure, my brothers and sisters, that you're going to be blessed. You're going to be challenged. You're going to be touched by the word coming from God. And so I want you to, at this time, enter into prayer, engage in prayer with me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you one more time for the word that's going to be coming to us. We pray, mighty God, that your touch will be upon every word. The Lord, that as we digest the word, that Heavenly Father, it will become a part of our life. That it will energize us, that it will, God Almighty, put us in a place, oh God, where we can be used by you. We thank you right now, God, for each and every individual who comes on. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, mighty God, for your blessed hands to be upon our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. With that, my brothers and sisters, let us get right into the word. And so today we'll be looking at the passage of scripture coming from the book of Psalms, Psalm 34 and the verse 18 through the 20, reading from the King James Version. You may listen to the reading of the word. And the Lord is nigh unto them that are broken heart. Let me read that for you again. For the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrary heart. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. My brothers and sisters, with that, I want to just give a simple topic to this message today. Brokenness. Brokenness. A songwriter declares, brokenness is, brokenness is what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. And so, my brothers and sisters, when David, in the Psalm 51, verse 17, David cried out unto the Lord for forgiveness. He says that his sacrifice to God is a broken and contrite heart. But what exactly does David mean? And what exactly do we look at when David speaks to this? I read to you from Psalm 34, but we are going to tackle this word today from a different angle. My brothers and sisters, what does it mean to have a broken heart or to be broken before God? Well, I can tell you, there are three things, my brothers and sisters, that we are going to really need in order to be broken before God. And so, my brothers and sisters, one of the things that we need to understand is that we must always see ourselves as dead to the flesh. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. We must see ourselves as dead to the flesh. In order for us to live in Christ, we have to be dead to the flesh. Because remember, the Bible says that, my brothers and sisters, in order for us, my brothers and sisters, to be close to God, we have to live in the Spirit. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, our brokenness comes, oh, brothers and sisters, from being broken in the flesh. Hallelujah. So the highway to brokenness, my brothers and sisters, is important for us to know that those of us who need to see God we need to recognize that, my brothers and sisters, we have to live in the spirit. There are three things that we might need. Hallelujah. As we look, my brothers and sisters, and individuals in our Bible who engage in brokenness before God. Oh, glory to God. According to Matthew chapter 16 and the verse 24, then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. When you are broken before God, my brothers and sisters, you have to lose yourself and find yourself in God. You cannot walk in the flesh, but you have to walk in the spirit. Oh, glory to God. The Bible says that Jesus said to his disciples, in order for you to walk with me, you have to be broken. You have to be broken in the flesh. What am I talking to you about? Is that my brothers and sisters, when we talk about 
brokenness. Every time I hear this word, I always think that when an individual says that something is broken, it means that it needs to be fixed. But my brothers and sisters, we cannot fix the flesh. The flesh is already broken. Oh, glory to God, the flesh has caused brokenness to happen in the life of Adam and Eve. The Bible says that, my brothers and sisters, when Adam and Eve recognized that they, hallelujah, were naked, they became broken. Their relationship with God was broken. Oh, glory to God, but we're not talking about that brokenness today. We're talking about a heart. Oh, glory to God that is broken before God. Can I get into this, into deeper matters? You see, my brothers and sisters, oh, glory to God, the verse uh, from Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, it says that, hallelujah, many people might have gotten confused at the same time they were trying to help somebody else. But what happens here, my brothers and sisters, is that when we deny ourselves, we, hallelujah, deny, hallelujah, our means, hallelujah, of individual sacrifice. We, hallelujah, become, hallelujah, an individual sacrifice. We die to self. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but many times we find ourselves where the flesh will rise up on us. And even so, when the Spirit wants to speak, when the Spirit wants the minister our flesh rises up but we must understand my brothers and sisters that we need to put ourselves in the background and allow God's spirit to come to the foreground you see my brothers and sisters as we take up the cross and we follow Jesus it simply means my brothers and sisters that it is impossible for us to say hallelujah that we are following Jesus hallelujah in our own stead when you follow Jesus oh glory to God almighty whatever he says you do it Whenever he says, walk your walk. Whenever he says, move, you have to move. Oh, hallelujah. This means, my brothers and sisters, that according to an ancient song, it says, I have decided to follow Jesus. The world behind me, though none go with me, yet still I will follow. When you are broken, oh, glory to God, God leads you to places that men will not go. God leads you, oh, hallelujah, into areas that men will not think about. God directs you. Oh, hallelujah, into places that men will not venture into. When you, hallelujah, follow God's leading, you are broken. Oh, glory to God. You see, my brothers and sisters, when we follow God, it says, the cross before me and the world behind me. But though none go with me, yet still I'll follow. Many might be asking me and saying to you and saying to me, what is wrong with you, my friend? Well, tell them that you are saved. You are broken. You are sanctified. You're broken, your Holy Ghost fill. You're broken, water baptized. You've got Jesus on your mind and you're running for your life. A broken man, hallelujah, is not responsible, hallelujah, for himself anymore because he has turned over his brokenness to God Almighty. Oh, somebody, are you broken today? I'm talking about brokenness and that is brokenness in the presence of God Almighty. You see, my brothers and sisters, even when you're broken, hallelujah, you deny yourself. There is something else that you have to do. You have to take up the cross and follow Jesus. The cross, my brothers and sisters, we must understand that the cross is a very important symbol, a very powerful symbol of the Christian faith. Why is the cross so powerful? Oh, hallelujah. Well, we need to recognize that the cross, my brothers and sisters, is the place where power came Oh, hallelujah, to the people of God with power. Oh, hallelujah, resurrection came. You see, my brothers and sisters, when people used to offer sacrifice and animals and sheep and goat, they wanted to please God. But the Bible says that that, hallelujah, hallelujah, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Man has, hallelujah, misbehaved in the Garden of Eden and lost his battle with hallelujah. That must be won. But here comes God Almighty. He gave the Lamb of God, hallelujah, the the Lamb of God was broken because of us. Oh, glory to God Almighty. Oh, hallelujah. Lots of people, my brothers and sisters, are destroyed in pride. When they want to destroy someone else, hallelujah, they, they engage in prideful engagement. But I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that the Bible says in Luke chapter 23 and the verse 35, and my people stood and behold the rules also with them. Hallelujah. This deride him, saying that he saved others. Let him 
him save himself. If he be the son of God, if he be the chosen one, they were talking about Jesus. My God Almighty, he was broken on the cross because he was nailed to the cross. The song says they were nailed to the cross. Oh, how much he was willing to bear with an anguish and loss. Jesus went to the cross. He got broken on the cross because of you and I. Oh, glory to God. The highway, my brothers and sisters, to brokenness is when we destroy flesh. What well, it says, kill flesh now. Break my desires. I'm talking to somebody who wants to be broken before God. Well, just like Jesus went to the cross, even though my brothers and sisters, he could have called 10,000 angels to the side. He did to his side. He decided to be broken for us in order for us, oh glory to God, to make it hallelujah to salvation. You see, a broken spirit is a spirit that is humble. Oh, glory to God. Can I talk to you about a man in the word of God who was humble? Oh, glory to God. Can I talk to you about a man who found himself in a humbling position? I believe, my brothers and sisters, that brother Abraham was humble before God because brother Abraham, my brothers and sisters, recognized, hallelujah, when he went, hallelujah, to sacrifice his son. My God, I believe that that man had a broken heart heart. But one thing about that broken heart, he submitted that broken heart to God because I believe brother Abraham said, God, if you, hallelujah, go with me, it doesn't matter, hallelujah, if that boy dies, it doesn't matter if I sacrifice that boy. All I want to know is that I trust you enough. He was broken before God. Is there somebody who wants a broken heart before God? Your flesh have to die in order for your heart to be broken before God. Oh my God, Almighty, see as we die before God, oh hallelujah, at the cross, at the foot of the cross, our flesh becomes hallelujah, dissolved, and the spirit of God rises up in us. My God, you see, oh glory to God, let me get to hallelujah, the benefits of brokenness. Isaiah chapter 35 and the verse 8 and 9 says, And it's an highway shall be there, and a way that it shall be called. It says that the way of holiness the unclean shall pass over it but it shall be for those hallelujah who are wayfaring men hallelujah though fool shall not err therein no lion shall be there nor no ravenous beast shall be up in heaven it my brothers and sisters oh hallelujah it shall be not be there but it says the redeemed shall walk there when you are broken my brothers and sisters you are destined for heaven because your heart is broken before God oh glory to God you see hallelujah the lion and the ravenous beast they are bad and wicked spirits and the power of darkness darkness hallelujah but let me tell you something once we are in a brokenness once we are in brokenness oh hallelujah those things will not enter in oh glory to god my brothers and sisters can i talk to somebody again about spiritual brokenness you see my brothers when you're spiritually broken oh glory to god you open up yourself oh hallelujah to the power of god in your life a broken life oh glory to god gains hallelujah God's power. Oh, glory to God. You see serious Christians who want to make a successful living on earth and they want to make it to heaven. They must be broken. Somebody cry out, God, I am broken. I'm not talking about hallelujah damaged. I'm not talking about hallelujah that you hallelujah need heat, that you need I'm patching up. I'm talking about the fact that your heart is is hallelujah is placed before God as something that God can hallelujah enter in it says there you must recognize that a person must acquire power that comes from brokenness serious Christians know that more broken the more broken they are the better it is to serve God unfortunately my brothers and sisters many Christians are yet to take the message of brokenness with all the required seriousness and commitment the reason why I say say this my brothers and sisters is that when you are a broken christian my god almighty you are set hallelujah you are destined for greatness because you have given your all you have given up yourself you have given up hallelujah all the things you do for the work of god and for his hands to show up in your life with all the requirements oh god almighty the serious christians hallelujah fall hallelujah 
Most Christians fall because they refuse to be broken. They refuse, hallelujah, to live a broken life before God. They, hallelujah, do not recognize, oh glory to God, that the Bible says that deep, call it after deep, according to Psalm 42 and the verse 7, and the noise water spout, all they wave their billows. You see, many individuals cannot be broken because they are surface Christians. Oh, hallelujah, only someone who has deep things and has deep understanding of the word of God is broken. Oh, hallelujah, because when you're broken, the Lord, hallelujah, will place things in you that no one else can have. You see, one of the most, hallelujah, major Christian problems we have in these last days is hallelujah Christians being superficial when you're superficial my brothers and sisters you live a life hallelujah partially in the flesh and partially in the spirit my God I'm so dear therefore my brothers and sisters you only look on the surface things therefore God cannot really show you the depths of things that he wants to do he cannot use you for deep purposes because you are not broken you see they will come to church and they will become church Oh, glory to God, but they don't become, hallelujah, Christ-centered, whereby their lives are totally submitted to Almighty God. They ignore their conscience. Hallelujah, probably, hallelujah, sometimes, my brothers and sisters, all they do is, hallelujah, to live on the surface things. But I want to tell somebody that when you are broken, my brothers and sisters, once you become broken, hallelujah, you have a contrite heart. The definition, my brothers and sisters, for a contrite heart or a contrite spirit. It means that we feel guilt or remorse over any wrongdoing that we do. We seek repentance, hallelujah, in place of our sinfulness. Oh, glory to God. In Psalm 51, we find where King David, hallelujah, became broken before God Almighty. He lamented before God. He decided that God, my condition, hallelujah, is bad. He did not put things in God's face and declare to God that, oh, I am all by myself or I am responsible for myself. You see, our attitude and expressions of brokenness, hallelujah, it does not come from outside, but it comes from inside out. We regard our position, hallelujah, our possessions, hallelujah, our placement as a gift from Almighty God. When you are broken, my brothers and sisters, God can lead you wherever he wants to lead you. He can direct your life wherever he wants to direct your life. He can tell you where to go and you go. He can call you any time of the morning. He can call you any time of the night. He can call you any time of midday. He can call on you at any time because you are broken. Hallelujah. Brokenness. Oh, glory to God is an inward thing. It's a part of the heart. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says, my brothers and sisters, that David, hallelujah, wrote the psalm just after Nathan, the prophet, confronted him about sleeping with another man's wife. This woman was Bathsheba. He impregnated her. Oh, glory to God and arranged for her husband Uriah to die. David's sin was great, but Psalm 51 and and the verse 1 says, David, cry out for the abundance of mercy of God. Is there somebody out there who wants to be broken before God? Well, I can tell you, you have to cry out for the mercies of God. You see... We have confessed to men. We have told men our secrets, but we have not spoken to God. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. Do you know why that is? I know that many people have looked on David over the time, and they have recognized that David, as the, as the word declares, was a man, a bloody man. His hands were filled with blood, but there's something about David. There's something about David. David was broken before God constantly. David said, my God Almighty, oh, hallelujah. He said, God, have mercy on me. Oh, glory to God. You see, David had a confession and a personal confessional prayer to the Father up above. Oh, glory to God, whereby David, hallelujah, put, hallelujah, his instrument before God. He got his spirit was broken. His heart was broken. The psalm reads a whole focus on in the verse 17. Hallelujah. And talk, it tells us that David, hallelujah, opened up himself to God and said, Lord, here I am. Here is my heart. I am broken before you. Is there somebody out there 
there today who wants to be broken before God. Well, your heart has to be centered on God. David, hallelujah, was a man after God's own heart because he was repentive. He was one who told God exactly where he is. As a matter of fact, he did not hide from God, but he told God, God, my position is that I am wrong, that I am in a dirty position. Is there somebody out there who wants to be broken before God? You cannot hide anything from God. You can hide from men. You can hide from your boss. You can hide from your wife. You can hide from your husband. You can hide from your children, but you cannot hide anything from God because he's all knowing what, what God wants and what God has hallelujah prepared for us is where we can tell him what we need. We can tell him where we are. We, as a matter of fact, we can confess to him and everything. Hallelujah. He will take care of. Let me explain something to you. Will you trust God knowing fully well that he is the one who is able to open and close door? You see, my brothers and sisters, you will make things available for others, but you won't make things available for God. You can ask yourself the question, does my brokenness mean that I cannot hallelujah? that I cannot live like others do? Yes, because when you are broken, you allow God, my brothers and sisters, to enter in. Hallelujah. Look at it, my brothers and sisters. When we talk about the natural love on earth, oh, hallelujah, when we want, hallelujah, to have somebody in our lives, we say that we let that person into our heart. Oh, glory to God. I don't know about you, but some of us, hallelujah, have been in love before. And so, hallelujah, we look at it and we say to ourselves, I'm going to let this person into my heart. I'm going to let them into my life. Oh, glory to God. But there comes a time, my brothers and sisters, when, when you have to let God into your life. Oh, hallelujah. The psalm opens up and says that when David appealed to God for mercy and forgiveness, David, as he pleaded to God, for God's steadfast love. It points out, my brothers and sisters, a sense of humility before God. As David openly admitted his sin, he confessed to God and he said to God, Lord, I know I deserve, hallelujah, death. I know I deserve a punishment. But David did not spend time looking on the inward answers and for solutions. There are many of us that I'm talking to today. You have tried to find your own solution. You have tried to find a way out. As a matter of fact, you have even schemed your way out. Hallelujah. Of paying the penalty. Oh, hallelujah. But can I tell you that we cannot escape the penalty. Only one price can be paid. And that is the blood of Jesus Christ and a broken heart. Is there somebody who wants to have a broken heart before God today? You see, when our inner brokenness comes before God, it is like, hallelujah, open opening up, hallelujah, a scent of sweet savor to his nostrils. When you are broken, it gets God's attention. When a person is broken, the in-depth part of them is shown. Can you imagine when you have anything? Just think of it, no matter what it is. If you have a coconut and you break it, you're able to see on the inside of it. When you have any you tend to have anything and this is broken. You can look on the inside. When a person is broken, that means that you've opened up your heart to God. The heart of stone becomes a heart of flesh whereby God can enter in. Search your heart. The Bible says, David says, search my heart, O God, and try me, O Savior. See if there be any wicked ways in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. That is what David was saying when he had a broken heart and a contrite spirit. He was saying, Lord, I am opening up myself. I'm not hiding anything from you. Here I am, Lord. Despite the fact that God is omnipotent, the Bible says what he wants from us is that we open up ourselves. Somebody needs to be broken before the Lord. We're talking about brokenness. Oh, hallelujah. See, rather than hallelujah, pretend before God because you cannot pretend before God. What we need to do is say, Lord, here am I. Oh, hallelujah. We have to humble our ourselves before God and recognize that we are totally dependent upon his mercy. Is there somebody who wants to be broken before God today and depend on his mercy? You see, my brothers and sisters, there are two things, oh, hallelujah, that will cause us not to be broken before God. One is the pride of life, oh, hallelujah, which opposes the mercies of God. So therefore, that's one, oh, hallelujah, we kill ourselves with pride. And let me tell you another thing, 
that we kill ourselves with my brothers and sisters. We kill ourselves with self-hope. Oh, glory to God. You see, when we tell ourselves that we can handle our situations on our own, that is where we are wrong. As we will make the mistake of putting hallelujah our thoughts before the thoughts of God. Oh, hallelujah. Can I talk to you? I know of an African hallelujah minister who went to the United States to preach and the people were there and he they were touched by him. They gave him all sort of big things, big cars and hallelujah, all sort of things. The mistake that he made, he brought the car back hallelujah to his country with him as he began to ride around in his country. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It came to the point where because the car was so large, he had to beg people for gas money anywhere he went to preach. Then they were giving him the money again and again. That means, my brothers and sisters, oh, glory to God, that it came to the point that nobody advised him, hallelujah, that he had to, hallelujah, have gas for his car. Oh, glory to God. What am I saying? When pride takes you over, oh, glory to God, you do not see the dangers. But thanks be to God, if you are an individual, oh, Oh, hallelujah is broken before God and you talk to God about the situations my God he will hallelujah let you know hallelujah when you are going wrong you need to be broken before God can I talk to you about a broken spirit oh hallelujah what it means David did not treat his sin like his personal children he did not treat it like it was indispensable what David said David described it as having sin ever before him. So David was saying to God, God, my sins are ever before me. Some of us try to put our sins under the carpet. We try to brush it under the rug. That is not brokenness. When you know, hallelujah, that your life is not right with God, you break down before him. You open up yourself to him and say, Lord, I cannot deal with this. As a matter of fact, Lord, I cannot solve this sin problem. Lord, here is my situation. Lord, take care of it. Brokenness, hallelujah, causes us to feel guilty over what we have done just like David did. You see, my brothers and sisters, David proclaimed his sins before the Lord. Is there somebody who wants to put your sins before God? He fully was aware, hallelujah, of his actions and how he has hurt others. Can I talk to somebody out there when you are broken? Hallelujah, you recognize all the things that you have done and what you need to do in order to get out of it. Oh, glory to God. God. The Bible says, my brothers and sisters, that we need grace. Oh, glory to God. The Bible says that grace is the unmerited favor of God. Oh, glory to God. It is, it is such that, my brothers and sisters, that we cannot, hallelujah, accept anything other than the grace of God. The grace, the unmerited favor of God, is that which we need to be broken. Oh, hallelujah. And a broken person will, oh, hallelujah, be Hallelujah. One who goes after the grace of God. The next thing that we need is to go into fasting. In order for us to be broken, hallelujah, and in order for us, hallelujah, to lose and kill flesh, we have to go into fasting. The Bible says that many of these do not come out except through fasting and through prayer. And once, my brothers and sisters, you are broken, then your spiritual warfare will begin. You see, the powers, hallelujah, to break, hallelujah, this hallelujah, this this. This flesh does not come out of, hallelujah, self, but it comes out of spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is dealing with the devil and his host. You see, we have an enemy. Oh, hallelujah, is marching against us. And the only way that we can win this war against this enemy, which is our flesh, which is Satan, is to, hallelujah, to be in fasting where God, hallelujah, can direct us. Oh, David, hallelujah, may have experienced a guilt-ridden heart but he did not sit in his guilt he was ashamed of his sin and hallelujah his past repentance david found correlation between the grace of god and rejoicing in salvation what am i saying to you some of us hallelujah cannot rejoice in our salvation because there is so much guilt there is so much pain oh hallelujah but once you become broken you become humble once you become humble you become a little saturated once you become saturated you are so low for Christ, once you become sold out for Christ, oh hallelujah, you're under his full covering. Hallelujah. Repentance, my brothers and sisters, does not end with us sitting in guilt and shame over our sins that we have committed. Repentance is an act of remembering our salvation. 
that comes from the turning towards God everlasting and steadfast love when you're broken you turn to god's love when you're broken you turn to god's mercy when you are broken you turn to your salvation and recognize that jesus christ paid the price for you the goal of true repentance is not to be shame based or fear or in fear or in self hallelujah the Dep depreciation but hallelujah that you are restored into the joy of salvation as you see the mighty hands of god through his mercy and his saving grace you hallelujah will respond in joy when you are broken oh glory to god you are joyous as a matter of fact when others are crying you are laughing when others are feeling uh, when others are experiencing rain you are experiencing sunshine why does god want us to have a broken heart and a contrite spirit according to isaiah 57 and the verse 15 god states that he lives at peace with them that are humble in spirit so when you are humble in spirit oh glory to god you are broken and you live in peace hallelujah with god you put yourself lowly for the spirit of god to rise high in your life when we see our sins hallelujah for what it is and we come to god in true repentance we are broken he will remove hallelujah the mask from our eyes and he will shave away the colors from our heart when you are broken God will remove the colors from your heart. Oh, hallelujah. When you acknowledge your sins, you are humbling yourself before the hands of Almighty God. And you are, hallelujah, offering yourself to Him that for Him to act, hallelujah, upon your life. You become intimate with Christ. The more you understand your sin, the more God reveals to you and to understand the depth of His grace. And once you find yourself in that position, you begin to glorify god that is when you are broken when you are really broken my god as a calling to psalm 51 and the verse 13 to the 17 just like david described he says a contrite heart as teaching a sinner about the glorious grace of god when you are broken you begin to recognize the true grace of god you begin to understand that it is by his grace are we saved oh hallelujah i wish somebody so would catch a fire around no one recognize that once you're broken you will see the grace of god for what it is oh hallelujah the grace of god is not hallelujah a grace period whereby hallelujah when that time is up it is up but the grace of god my brothers and sisters oh hallelujah is the unmerited favor that god has given to you and i despite the fact that we don't deserve it despite the fact that we should have died and gone to a devil's hell his grace hallelujah is sufficient oh hallelujah to carry us through if there's somebody who wants to be broken somebody say brokenness somebody say brokenness somebody say i want to be broken before your god oh hallelujah this is the kind of grace that we experience when true repentance come before god this kind of grace my brothers and sisters regenerates hallelujah within us a kind of repentance that is different from just telling god that we have sinned it is to, for us to turn towards God and away from our sins. Oh, glory to God. There is, is such a hope for those who are humble, hallelujah, before God, and that is through a contrite heart. Why should Christians apply this psalm to their lives today? Why should you apply brokenness to your life today? Well, I can tell you that this gives, hallelujah, a rich attitude towards God. This gives a rich attitude towards what God has done for you. This gives a rich, hallelujah, uh, a rich recognition thank you holy spirit towards what god has done for you men could not have done this for you men have failed us but the grace of god the mercies of god hallelujah wants its sight wants it to recognize his brokenness he will pour out his grace and his mercy on you hallelujah when christ came and lived here on, our, on earth his perfect life and died the penalty sin the sin of the sin for 
the, the penalty for sin that we deserve. That is grace. He enacted his everlasting mercy and steadfast love for those who love him and honor him. How can we honor God? We can get broken before him as he rose from the grave. He blotted out our transgressions for good. Hallelujah. Not just for that time, not just for 2,000 2, years ago, but for even now, for everlasting to everlasting. As he rose from the grave, oh my God, his sacrifice finally officially cleansed us from our sins and reconciled us to God. Are you broken as Christ was broken? Hallelujah on the cross. Through the belief in Christ, we are no longer cast out of his presence, but we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. We have been given a clean hand and a pure heart. The writer says, who have not lifted up their soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law of the Lord do we meditate day and night. Are you broken? Oh, hallelujah, when you are broken. Oh, hallelujah, you identify with a renewed spirit that is within you. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, you are broken. You are made a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Oh, hallelujah. Christ gave himself up for the reconciliation of men to God and to our relationship with God. Are you broken? God has, Christ has already paid the price for our brokenness. Are you broken? Therefore, if you want to become an ambassador of Christ, if you want to become a child of God, if you want to remain, hallelujah, saved, you have to remain broken before him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, being of this mindset, let us look, hallelujah, at the cross. When we look at the cross, we are no longer slaves to sin. Are you broken? When you're broken, you recognize that sin cannot hold you down anymore because you are broken, because you have a contrite spirit. Oh, hallelujah, you become free. Hallelujah, you are run, you are set free to run free. Oh, hallelujah, under the grace of Almighty God. Can I finish off this message to you today? As we look at the cross, the cross reveals his grace. It reveals the praise of his name. As we walk in the freedom from sin, oh, hallelujah, out of darkness into the marvelous light, you are broken before God. Is there somebody who wants to cry out, Lord, I I am broken before you. Brokenness, my brothers and sisters, also shows spiritual maturity. You see, hallelujah, quite a lot of us as believers will not, hallelujah, be ready today. We'll not, we'll not be ready tomorrow. We will not be ready next year. But one thing I am certain of, oh, hallelujah, is that in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 30, he says, he that is not with me is against me. So some of us might be saying, I am not ready, hallelujah, to hallelujah. I am not ready yet for brokenness. Well, I can tell you what the Bible says, that no man knows the time or the hour. Am I talking to somebody out there? You might be saying, hallelujah, I don't feel like I want Want to be broken right now well i can tell you my brothers and sisters that you never know the time or the hour when god is gonna call on you to check if you are broken before him Oh, hallelujah, to say to you, are you ready, hallelujah, to be broken? Well, let me explain something to you. This means that the only hallelujah way, hallelujah, to be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. You see, in Luke chapter 16, verse 30, it says, no servant can serve two masters at the same time. Are you broken? You are either hallelujah for him or you hate him. You either love him or you do not love him. You hallelujah can this despise him or oh, hallelujah you are his your heart you are his child oh hallelujah you see my brothers and sisters we have to be broken in order to belong to christ hallelujah because my brothers and sisters we do not know the time or the hour when hallelujah our our life is going to be called call in when our time is going to be called up failure hallelujah to take the cross let me explain something to you see many times we do not hear these things because people want to preach up the gospel for you but i cannot preach up the gospel for anyone i have to tell you as it is you see if you're not broken if you have not accepted his grace oh glory to god hallelujah just like the cross oh hallelujah it says that there will be a problem it says like many people who interpret the cross is when you cross over 
over, when you cross over your will to God's will, when you cross over your own things to God's ways, the will of God says one thing, but we want to do something else, although what the will of God is saying is that he has paid the price for us. We want to do our own thing, but I can tell you, I am crucified with Christ because it's not I that live, but the Christ that lives within me, for he gave himself for me, crucified, hallelujah, the flesh is dead, all the time you see Paul saying that he's walking about, and he's saying he's carrying the cross of Jesus Christ, are you willing to carry the cross of Jesus, are you willing to choose God, oh hallelujah, are you willing, hallelujah, to be in alignment with his word, well you have to be, you have to be broken, oh hallelujah, the Bible says my brothers and sisters, that we must carry the cross daily, that means that you are broken, Broken. That means that you are walking, hallelujah, in his will and his purpose. Oh, hallelujah, the Bible cannot say that you should take up your problems every day, but it says you should take up the cross of Christ and follow him. Oh, hallelujah, the big truth. And the final thing I will say as I come down to a close is that there is a big truth that I want you to understand from this message. Once you are broken, the majority, hallelujah, of your spiritual warfare is fought by the Spirit of God. You will not end counter in your life hallelujah anything that he will not battle for if you are not the enemy hallelujah then you hallelujah will have hallelujah little unbroken areas in your life but hallelujah when you are broken when evil spirits hallelujah and evil things come up against you God will fight your battle because you are broken. When you, hallelujah, get angry, he will, hallelujah, step in. He will touch your heart. Oh, hallelujah. You, hallelujah, will have a defense if you are broken. Oh, my God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for the battle that has already been won. The battle for our souls has already been won. But if you are not broken, if hallelujah, you are not letting God into your heart, my God Almighty, then, hallelujah, Hallelujah. Then Jesus is hallelujah. Whatever he has sacrificed for you is going in vain. Will you be broken before him? Oh, hallelujah. And hallelujah. Give God glory in your life. Can I just talk to you as I come down to a close? Abraham was broken because my brothers and sisters, he passed over his lying spirit. He hallelujah, passed through a lot of problems. The small weakness was that Abraham was a liar, but he put that to God and hallelujah, he was blessed. You see, Moses, this man had a problem with anger and he eventually actually prevented him from entering into the promised land. Are you broken? Jacob, he lived a life of deceit. Nothing good was happening to him until he identified his weakness. Hallelujah, but are you broken? David had his weakness and allowed almost a curse over his entire family. But one day David recognized, Lord, I need to be broken before you. And he gave himself, hallelujah, over to God. So what I want to say to you today, as I close this message, is that you need to be broken. The song says, brokenness is what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. Somebody needs to be broken before the Lord today. Give your brokenness over to God and let him saturate your life. Life, hallelujah and give you salvation and give you the keeping power and give you the authority and give you his mercy and his grace hallelujah what a word on the word 345 channel today brokenness brokenness is what i long for brokenness is what i need somebody out there you need brokenness today that god may enter into your heart hallelujah and put the devil hallelujah to shame and put the devil hallelujah to, 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 to be to run away from you. Put the devil hallelujah out of your heart and put Jesus in there by being broken before God that the flesh may die and the spirit may arise in you. Hallelujah. What a word on the word channel 345 today. Broken. Are you broken before the Lord today? As I close, I want to pray for somebody for your brokenness. I want to pray for your country heart before God. Oh, hallelujah. As we say, my brothers and sisters, hallelujah, do not just listen to the word, but apply the word to your life. Oh, glory to God that you, my brothers and sisters, hallelujah, may be in the hands of God to be used by him for his glory. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Mighty God, we thank you, oh God, for this word today. Brokenness 
is what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. Hallelujah. Lord, so many of us, oh God, we're not broken before you. We have not let you into our hearts. Oh God, we have not, oh God, I allow you to saturate our presence because, Lord, we want to do our own thing. But today, God, we come. God, that we want to be broken before you. Oh, God, so Father, this day we are saying we are crying brokenness before you. That means, Lord, that we're opening up ourselves to you. We are saying, Lord, take my hands and let it be consecrated. Lord, to thee, take my voice. Oh, God, and let it be, Lord, that which you use. Take my feet, Lord. Oh, God, because I am broken before you. And God, take me where you want to take me. Lord, take my mind and let it be whatever you want it to be because I'm broken broken before you take my whole life take my whole heart because lord i am broken before your father i thank you oh god for those who are listening this day and that god almighty as you god give us oh god almighty a sense of brokenness just like david did god that lord our lives may be consecrated lord to you that flesh may die and spirit may arise that god you may open up our eyes like the eyes of an eagle that you may give us vision beyond vision sight beyond sight the Lord, we will not end up like Brother Moses. Oh God Almighty, because of his anger, God Almighty, he did not enter into the promised land. Oh, glory to God. Oh God Almighty, we thank you, God. The Lord, God, as we open up ourselves and brokenness, oh Father, you will saturate our lives with your presence and cause glory to come unto your name. Father, I thank you, oh God, for that individual right now who is crying out to you, Lord, I am broken. God, maybe somebody that is listening to my voice never recognize that they are not broken yet god they might oh my god i might just be cracked but father i pray that you break them open oh glory to god just like the songwriter says oh hallelujah i am on the potter's wheel break me melt me mold me fill me and use me for your service god so today god i thank you god for the brokenness of the hearts of your people who listens to this message god and as oh god almighty you declare them broken god that their father that their spirits are broken and that they sorry their hearts are broken and that their spirit is contrite before you the lord you may enter there in god and bring glory to their lives and bring glory to your name in jesus name Amen. Hallelujah. With that, I want to say thank you so much for choosing the Word 345 channel. Hallelujah. For your platform, for your church service this day. I pray that the next time we come on, you will be here with us. God bless you and take care of yourselves. Have a good one. Well, well, well. Thank you so much, my brothers and sisters, for coming on to the Word 345 channel one more time. We indeed appreciate your presence. We indeed appreciate your sharing the link with someone. We want to say to you one more time as a part of the Word 345 family, even if you come on for two, three seconds, all we wanted to do is to recognize that there's a word here for somebody. Call somebody and tell them, listen to this message. There might be something in it, my brothers and sisters, that will bring a life to understand that God is real, that God is hearing their prayers. As a matter of fact, Somebody might just be waiting on this message of brokenness to come to truth with God's word. I thank you so much for being here with us. And I pray that next week, same time, you'll be right here with us. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves.